First of all, good morning. Greetings from Brazil. My name is Matheus Bezerra, and I'm going to talk about a little, a little about uh, this article that has been published in November 2019, and that is entitled "Submit Intubation Brief Literature Review and Case Report." So, uh, in the introduction, we have to talk about first what the, the patients with multiple facial fractures that require uh, correct use of the airway in a surgical field that allows an approach to reduce the fractures. Uh, in the maxillofacial surgery, the nasotracheal intubation is the preferred intubation method. Uh, this is due to the possibility of obtaining transoperative occlusion to guide the reduction and fixation of the fractures. Most of the fractures in the, the facial skeleton need the, the occlusion to guide the reduce the reductive and fixation pro procedures. Uh, in the case of nasal or orbital etymodial fractures, lefort two and lefort three fractures, uh, attempting nasotracheal intubation may result in major complications as the passage of the tube inside the school. So fractures with related to school school based Fractures uh, are more prone to have these complications. The tracheostomy is the most suited method for approaching patients with complex facial fractures. So, despite the the complications, it was the the most used method for these patients. So, Altamir in nine in 1986 introduced a technique called submental intubation in order to avoid the complications of the alternatives seen above, such as tracheotomy and nasotracheal intubation. So the description of the technique is performed through uh, orotracheal intubation, conventionally performed. Then we have to to carry out uh, two centimeters skin incision in the paramedial submental region adjacent to the lower border of the mandible. Then we perform the dissection with curved hemostatic forceps until reaching the buccal floor. Once we reach the buccal floor, we can incise the tip of the hemostatic forceps. And then we can initiate the passage of the cuff toward the skin followed by the tube after disconnecting it. So first we pass the cuff, then we pass the tube. After that, the tube is sutured in the skin with 2O nylon. And with the, the surgical procedure solved, we can make the reversion. And it's made by the passage of the tube followed by the cuff. So we have an alterate uh, passage. First the tube, then the cuff. The skin is then sutured and the intraoral incision heals by second intention. We don't have to suture. So the objective of the, the article is to carry out a brief literature review about the technique and report a case successfully treated with the submental intubation. Uh, the case report is about a male patient 18 years old, victim of a motorcycle accident presenting head injury and multiple fractures of the face. Uh, with the image is examined and the clinical examination, he was diagnosed with Lefort true fracture, frontal sinus fracture with cerebrospinal fluid leakage and skull base fracture with the raccoon side. So, due to the need for intraoperative intermaxillary fixation and existence of school base fracture, it was decided to perform the submental intubation technique. The steps of the technique were followed as shown previously. I, I won't uh, say then in the in the step by step, but I will use images to show the technique performed in this case. In the first image, we can see the curved hemostatic forceps passed through the skin until the buccal floor, demonstrating this tunneling technique. Then in the second figure, we can see the curve 
the curve has been passed first, and then we are insufflating the curve. In the third figure, we can see the tube already being passed and sutured with nylon tubo suture. And then in the, in the last image, we can see the reversal for conventional or tracheal intubation with the cuff, the cuff and the tube or tracheal and the skin suture with nylon and a curative. So, uh, although nasotracheal intubation is contraindicated in cases of nasal and or school-based fractures, it is the preferred method for maxillofacial surgery. Tracheostomy is an alternative that is subject to numerous complications and with a mortality rate of about 2% of the cases. So it has the complications and uh, mortality rate to uh, be tough. So the submental intubation proposed by Altamir is a fast, simple, low-cost technique and with a low learning curve for the maintenance of airway during the transoperative period of these patients. So with the proper indication, it is a very useful technique. When compared to tracheostomy, it has the advantage of a most, much less visible scar, low complication rate, shorter hospital, hospital stay, lower cost, lower mortality rate, and shorter execution time. Uh, it needs uh, the presence of a wire in the tracheal tube. Without uh, this tube, it is, the technique is very much difficult. <laughs> The contraindications of this technique include the need for long-term mechanical ventilation. So in these cases, the tracheostomy has the, the, its advantages. Lacerations in the anterior region of the oral cavity. Multiple mandibular fractures requiring extra oral access. So if we have the submandibular access, submental access, we can mm, perform the, this technique. Severe neurological damage and a history of keloid development. It is a relative contraindication. Regarding the complications, the most important are submental wound infection, abscess formation in the floor of the mouth, submandibular, submandibular salivary ducts or sublingual glands injury, mucosal formation, marginal nerve branch injury and hypertrophic scarring in the submental region. However, in the present case report, no complications were observed and the patient was assessed in the follow-up with a healing process within the normal range. He did not develop any, any of the complications stated above. So we can conclude that the submental intubation offers a viable easy to perform, minimally invasive and safe alternative for patients with contraindications to nasotracheal intubation due to multiple facial, facial fractures and requiring occlusion as a guide for fracture treatment. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we have the specific indications of the, the technique and if the, these indications are filled, we can have uh, satisfactory outcomes. So uh, thank you for your attention and you all have a nice day.